Hey guys, Sid from Sid's Trains here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Lionel 2021 Volume 1 Catalog. So the catalog came out today, Friday, uh, January 22nd, and I decided that I was going to just show you uh, my highlights of the catalog. There have been leaks of this catalog way before uh, it was released today. I have known about the stuff in the catalog for a week or more now. And at this point, I've kind of just got an idea of the things I like and the things I don't like. So we're going to take a look at that stuff. And I'll just show you the stuff I like. Uh, the majority of the stuff in the catalog, but not everything. Because if I showed you everything, that would just take a really, really long time uh, to do that. So let's go check out what we got in the catalog. So one quick thing before we get into this review of the catalog, I'd like to remind you that this evening at 6.45 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be on the Model Train Talk podcast YouTube channel with host Sam from Sam's Ogage Trains and his co-host RJ from RJ's Trains and a bunch of other people uh, talking about this uh, new Lionel catalog. Uh, talking about our um, feelings about it, uh, what we might be getting from it, and just talking trains in general. I hope to see you there, and I will leave a link in the description to the Model Train Talk podcast YouTube channel so you can reach uh, the live stream later this evening. Uh, but for now, let's uh, go check out the catalog. So starting out on the first page, we have the table of contents uh, showing you the different sections of the catalog with O scale, traditional, uh, Christmas, and then expanding your world with accessories and other things. On the right here, we have a, a new thing for Lionel, uh, Lionel voice control. You can control your trains with voice commands. Uh, you, you're simply speaking uh, into the Lion Chief app, and then the train follows your commands, like telling it to go forward or, or in reverse or blow the whistle. Uh, it's available in all new and previously produced Bluetooth engines. And uh, something else that's really cool is let me zoom in at the bottom here. Whoops, went to the wrong page. Here we go. So down here we have um, the feature of um, recording your own uh, crew talk announcements or custom train announcements in Bluetooth 5.0 engines. And basically, you can record your voice uh, in the Lion Chief app, and then you can play it back through the train as an announcement. So, uh, something people uh, really liked about um, past Lionel engines is the road specific crew talk. So, you could possibly create your own road specific crew talk for, say, a very famous engine is a New York Central Hudson number 5344. You could say New York, C New York Central 5344. Um, a departing or something like that and then play it back and have your own custom recording uh, which is really cool so let's uh, move on we have our uh, first page with O scale and this is actually one of the items in the catalog and I'll show you that in a couple minutes got our legacy steam engines and the features of them I've always liked these diagrams because you can see the inside of the trains and here's the first big item the uh, Vision Line uh, 21010 2 has uh, returned to the line all line. Uh, starting out, uh, it has voice control. And to look at a couple of the features, it has whistle steam as it did before. Uh, it has blow down steam, swinging bell. Uh, it's, real, it's a really long engine. And then, of course, minimum 072. Uh, we have a, a Fantasy Valley Flyer paint scheme. Uh, not going to lie, this looks pretty good. I'm not uh, too big into the fantasy schemes, but this one looks really good. We have an all black uh, number 3009. Uh, I like the look of just a simple black steam engine. We have a black bonnet Santa Fe. Uh, oh, whoops, clicked in the wrong spot. So let me let my let my computer load here. Here we go. Uh, in the center here, we have the a uh, Santa Fe. Uh, Santa Fe black bonnet paint scheme and uh, it looks good the tender has the uh, the bonnet uh, red on it it's kind of cool but I'm just it's just not my cup of tea and then this is my favorite one a uh, number 3001 it's more similar to the first uh, uh, 21010 that Lionel did a uh, number 3000 just the black paint scheme with the white walls and the wheels 
uh, I, I like that look um, better than the rest. But overall, these look really good, and it's cool to see Lionel bringing back some old toolings. Up next, we have the USRA Pacifics. Um, these have whistle steam in them. Uh, none of these uh, are super, like, none of them really talk to me. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get one of these, but... Uh, if I did get one, I'd probably get this Nickel Plate Road uh, by Warbonds one. It, it just looks cool. It's different. That tender uh, really catches your eye, and I like it. But it's also uh, interesting to see Lionel putting the uh, the Vanderbilt oil tenders behind uh, some of these Pacifics. That's really cool looking. This Great Northern one looks good. I don't think that's very prototypical for the Great Northern. I think their Pacifics looked a little different, but overall, it looks really good. Uh, here's uh, more uh, Pacifics and passenger cars. We have the MKT and the uh, GMNO. Both of these look really good. Uh, I like uh, anything that's red, so this one I think looks really good. And we got the passenger cars for them with Texas Special. And then, uh, oh yeah, all these cars are t uh, Texas Special. We have a, a two-pack, another two-pack, a station sounds car, and a two-pack. That's kind of interesting. They're all they're just sold as two-packs. That's kind of interesting. Instead of a four pack, a two pack, and a uh, station sounds car, it's just a bunch of two packs. That's kind of different to see. But again, these have whistle steam, and overall, they just they look really good. And here's here's what people have been really talking about. It's cool to see Lionel bringing back old toolings, and this is a tooling we have not seen in a very long time. Lionel has done the Lion Chief Plus Camelbacks with the TMCC Camelback tooling. However, we have not seen a command control top of the line Camelback since I'd say around 2003-ish. It has been a long time and it is great to see uh, these engines are returning. Uh, some notable ones are the, New Jer uh, the Central New Jersey. That's always a, uh, a popular Camelback paint scheme. Uh, this blue Comet right here looks really good i don't think any camelbacks were ever painted like this but it looks really good uh for uh, some of my friends and uh, other long island fans we have a long island number 18 camelback here and this is probably the one that everyone's talking about this is the strasburg uh, number 771 uh, i'm not a uh, strasburg like historian or anything i don't know a lot about strasburg so i don't think this is actually the one that strasburg has or had i believe the one strasburg um has or had it's just i don't know enough Stra about strasburg to know if they have it still but i think the camelback they had was not a um didn't look quite like this but it's cool to see lionel uh, testing the market with Stras strasburg stuff they started out with the um, Lion Chief set, now they're moving to Legacy and seeing if people really want it because personally, I want Strasburg number 475 or number 90. Um, but Lion, I think Lionel's testing the market and if they have a, um, a good following with uh, these engines, maybe they'll make a scale number 90 and scale number 475. And then we have the Redding, uh, the N NWO and... Uh, the N Y O N W. I'm I'm mixing things up. If I zoom in here, I can actually read it. Yeah, the N Y O N W Camelback and uh, a Halloween. Lionel does a lot of ha Halloween stuff, <laughs> and here's another Halloween engine. But these, I think, are going to be a very very popular item. And I heard from somebody that these are gonna these have whistle steam, but they might also have a swinging bell. So these might be like an H, like the H10 Lionel made. A very small engine, but just packed full of features. Uh, but let's move on here. Uh, this is something that really caught my eye. I'm a New York Central fan. I have lots of Hudsons, and I have a Mohawk, but my Mohawk is not an L2 like these. Mine is an L3A, number 3005. But these are really interesting to see. Uh, this this uh, pacemaker uh, paint scheme Mohawk is really crazy looking. I don't personally. It, it doesn't look bad. It's just not my not my cup of tea. So, yeah, I don't think I'd buy one that looks like that. But we have a um, number twenty seven hundred, which I believe was the L two A um, blueprint engine, or like the first in the class. Uh, next, we have twenty seven twenty eight. Then we have a New Haven one. The New Haven never had a Mohawk, but a Mohawk is a mountain type, and I believe the New Haven had 
a mountain type that looked like a mohawk and uh, this one is number 3507 uh, here we have what i believe to be a um let me actually zoom in to this image slightly differently let my load uh computer load here for a second there we go let me okay i don't know let me just move there we go so uh with uh this engine here if it might be hard to tell but it looks kind of dirty i think this one might be uh possibly will be weathered by harry heike but we'll have to We'll have to see on that one, but this is number 2790. And if I zoom out here, I can just shift all the stuff back. There we go. And uh, at the top here is the one that I would get if I got one. I would get this one, uh, number 2775. Uh, it's in just the normal black paint scheme. And I just like the simple black steam engines. And then below it, we have a gray 2727, kind of similar to the Vision Line Niagara they did in that gray. Uh, a lightning stripe paint scheme I guess you would call it uh, but yeah these look really good and so and this down here is a really cool set this is the uh, New York Central pacemaker set with five box cars and a caboose and one of the box cars is a vision line box car which is really cool and it's a really good price for the set of uh, five uh, four ninety nine ninety nine so five hundred bucks retail so the uh, dealer price would be lower but I there something just came out from Lionel or was delivered from Lionel that is not having a good fall of not having good reviews it's the new milk cars Lionel produced they changed the tooling for the trucks and the couplers and the couplers are just awful they can't even connect to anything they're so bad so I'm a little hesitant to buy any rolling stock from Lionel until they say that they um have fixed the whole coupler and truck issue because i don't want to buy something and have it not work um engine wise i think lionel's been doing pretty good but the freight cars right now i don't think they're doing too well with but overall i really like this page and i'm glad to see lionel again bringing back some old toolings everything everything steam wise in this catalog is older toolings which is um good to see so moving on to legacy diesels we have the SD70 ACEs. I actually have an SD70 ACE uh, in a Texas special paint scheme from probably a decade ago now. It's probably from around 2010-ish. Uh, but these all look really good. Uh, this uh, Monon one is cool. Uh, you don't see that paint scheme very often, but I like this Baltimore, Ohio one. Uh, I'm from Maryland, so the B&O, the C&O, the Chessy, it's always cool to see that kind of paint scheme on an engine. Uh, we have the Alco PAs. Uh, again, cool to see these back. We have the MKT. Uh, the New Haven always looks good in, um, or the New Haven Alco PAs always look good to me. I just like that look. And we even got Cotton Belt. Uh, that's another um, paint scheme or road name you don't see very often. Uh, this is going to be really popular. The Delaware and Hudson is um, a very popular railroad, but there just isn't a lot of stuff out there for it. So. Lionel's producing this, and I think these cars and these engines are going to sell. Uh, there's going to be a lot of orders for them as Lionel stuff is built to order. As you can see, uh, almost everything from Lionel is built to order. There's always extras because people order more than they need. But I think these are going to sell really well. Uh, these remind me of the uh, Alco PAs that Lionel made uh, back in the 90s. Their first scale diesels, uh, or first scale passenger diesels, I'd say. Uh, Mike Wolf from MTH actually helped uh, build them back in the 90s and this paint scheme was one of the ones they did and it just reminds me of that and again just a very uh, good looking set and I think something that will sell uh, pretty well and then here we have the GMNO uh, it's kind of interesting they have heavyweights with uh, the Alco PAs that's just something you don't see very often I usually expect um, streamlined cars with Alco PAs but instead they got heavyweights and they look really good it's a very um, stylish uh, paint scheme in my opinion. Here we have the GP30s. I don't know the last time Lionel did the GP30s. I don't follow diesels too much, so it's uh, I have, I don't know the last time they did it. But I think uh, it's been a little while, and they got some cool paint schemes. And personally, I like these two here, the Chessy system and the B&O. Again, I'm from Maryland, and I like that. But the interesting thing about this one here is this is a... 
a chassis system that's been patched for the CSX, which is uh, really cool. CSX runs through my um, my town, and it's cool to see um, a CSX engine, but in the old chassis paint scheme. And then the B&O down here always looks good, in my opinion. Then we got all the other, the Sioux line, BNSF. Uh, Burlington Northern, that's been patched for BNSF. Uh, Ch Chicago Northwestern. Uh, Reading and Northern in Kansas City Southern. That's a really interesting uh, paint scheme. All white with the red lettering. Definitely something different, but overall I, I like these two up here. Now, this is a return of something that we have not seen in a long time, and wow, Lionel is going crazy with the fantasy paint schemes. These are the Veranda Turbines. Lionel, I think the last time they did these was, again, like the Camelbacks, 2001-ish, 2003-ish that kind of time period early 2000s and it's been a long time but if we look at the uh the, the features over here we have a die cast body that's that's the big thing about these they're all die cast so they are extremely heavy and uh just a crazy engine in size and um power and weight uh, we have a cab interior dual smoke super bass sound from the tender that's interesting uh, lionel does the super bass um, B units and they put that feature in the tender for this so that's kind of interesting um, what else do we got LED Mars and emergency stoplights um, diesel and turbine sounds match with smoke and speed so that, that this will be interesting to see them run and the sound of them but I believe these three are the only uh, realistic ones uh, this one might be a fantasy UP scheme with the gray top with the all gray top but only the Union Pacific, I believe, had Veranda Turbines. We got uh, these two down here look like W1 Electrics, uh, the Great Northern and Pennsylvania uh, Verandas. I think this Army one's going to sell uh, a lot because of this. Sh um, I think it's a shark mouth at the front. Um, oh, we have another Union Pacific one in the Greyhound paint scheme. And then these two up here, I think, look really good. This is a Southern Pacific and a Rio Grande. Uh, overall, I think uh, they all look decent, um, but if I'm talking about the fantasy paint schemes, I personally think that um, these two uh, look, uh, look the best. And Sorry if my computer is taking a while to load and focus, but I, that's why I'm just talking for a little longer so you can get a good look at these. These two are my favorite of the fantasy paint schemes. Uh, here's another... Um, engine that's been talked about a lot before even before the catalog came out because there were all the leaks uh, these are the sw8s and the main reason why people talked about them is not because all of these is because this one right here this is strasburg uh, 8618 which um, to my knowledge is still at strasburg and still running and something they use but correct me if i'm wrong i'm by no means a historian i don't know a lot about strasburg i just um know enough and like it just because of some of the history but this is the one that's uh, been talked about a lot and again it's i think it's a test by lionel to see if people really want scale strasburg stuff if i zoom out here uh, we have some road specific specific details on i can't talk road specific details on these we have this one with the number of words here this one has the number of words here and i believe one of them had a uh Oh, here we go. This one has um, a strobe light on top of the cab. So that's really cool to see. And something that I think people will enjoy is the fixed pilots. Um, that's always something people enjoy. Instead of having the pilot move with the truck, it's fixed. And that's kind of uh, what, what they call three rail scale is having fixed pilots. And just having a more scale look. And it's cool to see Lionel. Um, bringing that uh, feature into their trains, but and still having the L31 minimum curve. And here's probably the biggest failure, in my opinion, of this catalog. This is the Acela. Okay, let's let's take a minute to just um, think about Lionel and the Acela and their history with it. Lionel produced the Acela, the Acela. I believe around 2006-ish. Um, I don't remember the exact date because the train never really meant uh, meant or like 
I, I never liked it enough to get it or really care about it. So I never uh, looked into the history behind it or in general cared much about it. But I did see it as a kid and it was always cool, but it just never, I was never drawn to it. I'm more of a steam engine person and it just, it never, I never was um, drawn to it. But the, the Acela they did had a lot of issues. The pantographs went up and down, the doors on the side opened, and the cars tilted as they went around the turns. And those features went bad and didn't work all the time straight out of the factory. Now, even then, it was an amazing set and had a lot of cool features. And in my opinion, would be something worth buying. But... Lionel has actually eliminated those features from this set. They've eliminated the cars tilting, I believe, and they have um, removed the doors moving. Uh, let me let me look at the features here and see what we have. Uh, we have power. Let's see here. Okay, so we still have the panographs, um, but I believe, yeah, as I see, the doors are, I believe, manual doors. And the cars do not tilt like they used to. Um, which I believe Lionel removed that because they were just having so many issues with that feature. And it just wasn't worth it to them to produce something with those features if it wasn't going to work or be very effective. Oh yeah, over here. Over here are some of the uh, features that I was talking about. Manually opening doors and closing doors. Um, passive tilt mechanism, cars auto... Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Um, I stand corrected. Uh, the cars do still uh, have the tilt mechanism on them, uh, but the main feature they got rid of is the opening of the, uh, the automatic doors that opened uh, via the TMCC or Legacy remote. Um, that was probably the biggest uh, issue they had. But uh, so I guess the set isn't really that big of a letdown in comparison to the last one, but. The real issue is the price. This thing is extremely expensive for what it is. It's twenty four ninety nine ninety nine, and then a add on three pack is ninety nine nine hundred ninety nine ninety nine. So basically, a thousand dollars for three cars and twenty five hundred for three cars and an A and an A unit. So if you think about it, the whole set is thirty five hundred dollars retail. That's just a ridiculous amount of money. I believe that even the Vision Line Big Boy wasn't anywhere near that expensive uh, retail. So it's just crazy the amount of money this thing costs. But let's, I'll start, I'll stop ranting about it. And I'll just show you what Lionel's offering. But what's on the next page is really what I will rant about. So we have the Amtrak uh, paint scheme here. And then an Amtrak Acela Concept paint scheme. And this is an official license of Amtrak. Uh, it's a product that's licensed by them, which is kind of cool. But this right here is, um, this is just silly in my opinion. A New Haven Acela, a Milwaukee Road Acela. Really? Like, are we, are we to that point where we're just making random things? Like, I just think it's crazy. I think Lionel is almost getting too creative with her paint schemes. It's just, it's unnecessary. I understand paint schemes, or fantasy paint schemes are sometimes interesting, but they've just gone crazy with this engine, and this isn't even the end of them. Here we have another set of fantasy paint schemes. We have... The M10,000, we have what looks to be a Broadway Limited or Pennsylvania High Speed Train and then the Santa Fe War Bonnet Acela. This is just crazy. I don't think Lionel should have made so many fantasy paint schemes with this Acela. I think they should have just done it. maybe one or two Amtraks and been done with it. And the price alone just makes it crazy and the paint schemes. This is just a crazy engine. And I think it's something that isn't going to sell very well because it's just too expensive and I don't think any of these paint schemes are going to sell very well because they're just not 
realistic at all. Uh, lots of the time, the fantasy paint schemes Lionel uh, does have some relation to the train. Like a New York Central Mohawk is in a New York Central paint scheme. Well, the Acela was never in a warm bonnet scheme or an M10,000 scheme or a Pennsylvania scheme. It's just, just crazy. And how about I show you something that's even more crazy than these paint schemes, if I can find it. This catalog is so big. Um, but it'll take me a second and then I'll find it. Here we go. Look at this. This is a Polar Express Acela. Okay, okay. I get Lionel likes to put the Polar Express name on just about anything, but really, on an Acela? That's just, that's just ridiculous. Lionel's just getting carried away with their ability to put fantasy paint schemes on anything and the Polar Express on anything. I'd much rather them produce another um, scale Berkshire again for the Polar Express than them produce a Acela that I would for one never buy and if I did buy it I probably would never run it because it just looks so freaking weird so yeah this this is just completely unnecessary and I think Lionel's just getting carried away with their abilities to produce certain products but who am I to say anything because I'm just a kid on YouTube so let let me go back a little here <laughs> and stop ranting about all that and show you some of the other stuff in the catalog so we have a nickel plate road work train here interesting we have a track uh, what looks to be a ballast tamper we have a um, speeder on this expansion pack and yeah, another SW8 um, and overall a cool set I think people will like that uh, we have more passenger trains we have a New Hope and Ireland excursion train uh, we have a uh, Asa Packer set interesting i don't know much about this uh, what does it say uh, lehigh valley there we go that's why i don't know much about it because i don't really know much about the lehigh valley to begin with so uh, uh yeah it's interesting looking just not my thing and i don't know much about it uh, here we have the new york central cardinal um, train set uh, the 1926 cardinal it's really cool looking these red uh, pullmans behind it in the uh, new york central pacific uh, definitely cool to see and this is the one that really caught my eye. This is the Valley Flyer. And the cool part is this down here. This is a, a Lionel uh, Pac uh, Pacific, but it's the uh, President Washington that looks to be retooled uh, with this side skirting to look like the Valley Flyer, which which is cool to see. And I'll just move my uh, shot back here, and now we'll move on. Uh, here we have the reissue of the John Bull sets. Uh, my brother actually has the John Bull in the center here. Here, here. Again, I cannot talk today. We have the John Bull set. My brother has this set with the three cars and the engine. He got it years ago from my aunt. And I've just never shown it on the channel because it just was never uh, much to show. But if you guys want to see it, I can uh, always pull it out from under the table. Uh, down here we have the Uncle Sam uh, John Bull set. And then up here we have the Pennsylvania uh, John Bull display set. Uh, I think this might have traveled around the country or something. I don't know much about it. So uh, if you want to uh, know more about it, I guess you could read this section over here. But these are cool to see. They are conventional, uh, just simple conventional runners. But overall they're, they're very detailed models and they look really good as uh, my brother has one, and I've seen the detail that they have. Uh, we have Rio uh, Grand Ski Train cars. Uh, we have the Vision Line box cars. Uh, all of them look good, and they have the, uh, the different uh, sounds of uh, stuff being loaded in and out of them. I like this Baltimore and Ohio one a lot. We have uh, gondolas uh, and a bunch of different paint schemes. Uh, this one in the center here, the Conrail one, looks kind of interesting. Uh, we have beer cars. Uh, I think these will be really popular. Uh, we have more tool cars. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about these and people um, liking the style of them. Uh, more kitchen cars uh, and bunk cars. Lionel's uh, done these, uh, I think, a couple times in the past couple of years. Um, so it's cool to see them as always, and I think a lot of different paint schemes now. 
And here we have our standard O stuff. Uh, the funny thing is, standard O stuff actually has the good trucks from Lionel, so it's just silly that the the lower end stuff, so to speak, has better trucks when the nice stuff has junky trucks and couplers. But uh, we have our double door box cars. I have a couple of these of uh, older, but the same tooling. And then we have uh, the gondolas with the ballast loads. I like this Norfolk and Western one in this bright green paint scheme. We have Team CC speeders and uh, Team CC uh, ballast tampers. I don't know if Lionel's ever done Team CC ballast tampers, but it's cool to see them do this. And then if we move into the O gauge section, we have all our Lion Chief stuff. I'm just going to uh, skim through this if this page loads. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is uh, the K, uh, semi scale K4, or the baby K4, as Lionel calls it. Uh, it's cool to see these return. Uh, they haven't done them in a really long time. I like this Tuscan uh, Pennsylvania one here. We got our RS3s and GP7s. They all look good. Not much to say about them. They're just simple diesels. Got our Thomas and Friends section. And the rest of the catalog, for the most part, is just a bunch of, um, I say, licensed products from Pixar and Disney and just all these different uh, different uh, places. So I'll just I'm just gonna skip over and just uh, show you one one more thing that I, I I thought was kind of interesting. Where is it? It's right here. I thought this page was interesting. Uh, they have the generals on this page. Uh, I like this Pennsylvania one here. Uh, I just like that. Uh, the smokestack just looks really good. And then we have our 080s. I think they, have, they haven't done uh, Lion Chief 080s in a long time. So it's cool to see them. And I like this Buy War Bonds one down here. So uh, that's, that's about all I have to really say about the catalog. Uh, they have some more... Uh, licensed products like the these box cars there's tons of box cars in this catalog these pages go on and on there's anniversary for amtrak battlefield honor angela trotta thomas this is just stuff goes on and on so i'm not going to bore you to death with all that stuff and that's just about everything that uh, caught my eye and i i felt uh need to be uh shown or i need to talk about because i I like everything that Lionel makes, but I, I mainly like the higher end stuff because that's what I collect and I like to um, show off in my collection. So uh, that's about all I have to say about the catalog. Uh, don't forget uh, tonight at 6.45 uh, p.m. Eastern Time where I'm going to be on the Model Train Talk podcast uh, with Sam, RJ, and a bunch of other people. Uh, make sure uh, to come to the live stream where we'll be talking about this catalog some more and giving our opinions and maybe talking about what we're going to get. So uh, that's about all I have to say. And as always, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid, and I'll see you next time, guys.